Zeus and all the higher up. Right now that we know that they got discontinued, how would you feel about God being discontinued? If well, he was, that's an impossibility. Good question, but, but it's But in the sense that they're not here anymore, you know, with time, what if, you know, what would you believe in that, in the sense that we stop believing? That's a good question. My man, though, it's, it's absolutely impossible. It'll never happen. I'm just saying because those three gods and they're not believing in it. Anymore. Yeah, because they're not real, though. So how that's do you feel we, we won't be the same? Well, because the, the God that we believe in actually exists, and theirs didn't. That's why theirs faded away. Okay, but you did mention something about truth, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So how, how would you play in truth with that? How, do, how would I what? I'm how are you playing truth with what you just stated? How would I play play truth? Mm -hmm. uh, well, so you know. So truth is that which conforms to reality. Right. Reality is determined by God. Okay. And so I would say exactly that. God has said that all the na all the gods of the nations are idols. Okay. And so that includes the the Roman pantheon. That includes the uh, mythology gods. Um, that includes the Roman Catholic Christ, okay. whose work on the cross wasn't sufficient. That includes Islam. That includes Buddhism. Okay. I mean, whatever religion you're talking about. So is that, that includes all of those? They're false. They don't exist. They're not the same religions. Right. But they are they are spinoffs of man's idolatrous and rebellious imagination. So when do it comes you apply to that to like worldwide religions, such as like well, Muslim, any religion that's not yeah yeah like any religion that's not the Christian religion yeah. And why specifically Christians? Like well, were like right, right. Okay. Well, that's a good question because again, it's about truth, right? And so Christianity is the oldest religion because Christ had no beginning; he always existed. Right. And the Bible says all things were made through Christ and for Christ. Okay. And so what you have, though, is that God in His mercy, He's condescended to give us His Word, that God has actually spoken mm -hmm. in, his, in His Bible. Mm -hmm. And so you have God's Word now in the Scriptures, and you can look into the Scriptures and find out what you must do to be right with God. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, in the sense that we all relate with God, where God is an American religion, what, 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 what's an American religion? Like, let's say Catholicism. That involves God. Why would they be less than a Christian? Well, well. So again, I mean, it's about the scriptures, the word so like of God. Like little details that play. In. Well, it's not just the little details. They, I mean, in a sense, um, there are some little details that Christians might vary on. Right. But when you're talking about groups like Roman Catholicism, mm -hmm. we're not talking about little details anymore. You're talking about significant details that they try to alter, and they try to supplement with what they call the authority of the church. Okay. And so these are these are these are huge details. And so what they want to say is that Christ's work on the cross is not sufficient to save you. You also have to basically, um, and they wouldn't use this language, but this is exactly what it amounts to. That you also have to basically supplement Christ's work on the cross with your own work. Okay. Whether it's in life or after you die, they have something called purgatory, right. which is not even a doctrine that's even around anywhere in existence until like the year 800 anyway. Mm -hmm. But so they believe that in purgatory, you can even do some stuff to actually merit their own salvation after that. Right. So it's just a matter of, of looking at God's word and say, okay, does this align with what God, has, God himself has given us in the scriptures? And it doesn't. Okay. Same thing with the Mormons, same thing with the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Muslims, but Christianity, I'm talking about biblical Christianity is the only religion that is consistent with what it claims to believe in. Right. So let's stay on that concept. Let's say somebody stole something, somebody murdered, are they weighted the same when it comes down to judgment? Are they what? Weighted the same? In the um, sense that it's still so the same? are all sins weighted the same? I mean, that's what I'm asking. No, that's a great, no, that's a great question. Actually, they're not. Because uh, you know Christ says things like, it, like I pointed out earlier, it'll be it'll be better off for people living in Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for those those towns and places where Christ actually went to with the gospel. Right. And so what he's doing there is he's saying that there, the greater sin, there's a greater sin than let's say um, um, uh, let's say uh, sensuality and sexual sin, mm -hmm. and that is rejecting the gospel that you whatever is brought to wherever you are. So that sin's greater than than um, um, something like they were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. But all sin is damn worthy in the sense that every sin leads to hell. Think about what Adam did in the garden. I mean, Adam ate a piece of fruit, and the entire universe is cursed now. The whole earth is cursed now because Adam did that. I thought it was Eve. Well, Eve. Apple. So what Eve? Eve. So it's a fruit. Not specifically say apple. It's funny. That's kind of like the conception that we have. But it's the fruit. So whenever Eve eats it. The violation for us is really when Adam eats it, because Adam was the one who was our representative. 
So whenever Adam falls, we fall with him, but we are also born in sin. Right, right. And we're just right. as accountable as Adam is because of our own sin. Redemption. Yeah. Right, okay, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, I mean, these, yeah, these are good questions, but that's why every sin is equally damn worthy. So from the get-go, we're sinners. So, yeah. I mean, a yeah. child with pure innocence, that, that's Doesn't not exist. a sinner? There is no such thing as a pure, innocent child. Only Jesus Christ was the only perfect one. And he did that for imperfect humans. So what's you your version that? of innocence then? Um, that which conforms to, um, put it this way, sin is a lack of conformity to the nature of God. Right. Okay. Right. So innocence or perfection, or let's say sinlessness, is complete conformity to God, His will. In other words, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So, so innocence, or let's say uh, uh, in, a, in a positive sense of perfection when it comes to God, is loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind every second of your life from the time you're born until the time you die. Every deed, every word, every thought, always right. motivated by the glory of God and your love for God. Right. And let's say I do something bad, is there any, if I was to do something good, would I cancel out? Or well, is there good a question, sin man. and I'm hold against it? So what the Bible teaches is that anything that's not done in faith is sin. Okay. And think again about the motive, man. If the greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, so mm -hmm. we do something that we call good, but the motive is not for God, it's actually not good because we violated the greatest commandment. So as long as I associate God with every good deed that I do, that's pretty much well, the thing what is, you want. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, though, man. The, the point of all of this is the fact that you cannot keep this standard. As a human being, it is impossible for you to keep this standard that right, I'm bringing right, up. So the question is, how can I be right with God then? If right, I have, exactly. right? So here it is, man, that Jesus Christ came into the world, lived the life that we're talking about, perfect innocence. Right. Jesus Christ alone lived that life. Okay. He did it. He, he came to earth with the purpose to die for, for sinners, right. Right? right? That's why he came to earth. That's what this is all about. So the only way that you can be right with God is because, so Jesus Christ, when he goes to the cross and he, he bears the sins of his people, he's bearing his people's sin. He's bearing the sins of all those who come to him in faith, right? right? He's bearing the sins of those who call upon the name of the Lord. And he pays for every single one of them, past, present, future. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that, so when the Bible talks about, it's by faith alone that you're saved, not by your works. In other words, you cannot be saved because you're good enough to be saved. So why, not, why am I not saved if he's sin? I mean, he paid for our sins in the future. So, see, so what about future thing. sins? But it's, it's Christians. He died for Christians. Okay, specifically for Christians. Well, the thing is, though, here's the thing. When he, he dies for every single one of their sins, what that means is that he suffers the judgment of those sins in their place, right? Yeah. He's raised from the dead. That's, that's the Father accepting the sacrifice of Christ. Here's the thing, though, my man, okay? The Bible makes it very clear, my man. Anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anybody can do this in the sense of the gospel is not, uh, put it this way, the gospel goes to every tribe, tongue, every nation, every corner of the earth, every demographic. And within that demographic, wherever the gospel is, you're going to have a remnant of people who call upon the name of the Lord. Do confessions count in that statement? Um, like verbal confession? Yeah, like when well, that's part of it, man. But here's the thing: like somebody who's who's truly born again. Mm -hmm. What that means is that somebody who's truly born again is is somebody who's going to want to confess their sins, and they're going to want to leave off sinning. Mm -hmm. It's it's by grace that you're saved, not by your works. Right. Yeah. So that's the question for you, man. Like, do you believe in Christ? Do you have faith in this Christ? And if you do have faith in that Christ, it'll it'll manifest itself by the way you live. You're known by your fruit, in other words. Mm -hmm. You see, the problem is, I think in our culture, a lot of times people say they're Christian, but by their deeds, they actually deny that. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. By their lifestyle, by how they live. So there's a lot of people who are professing to be Christians, but they're actually not. And you can see that by how they live. Right. So would you say that any bad circumstances God going against you or Satan working? Well, actually, yeah, that's a good question, man. So the Bible teaches that God is sovereign. And so every bad circumstance, in a sense, God is sovereign over those circumstances. But does he use other means of making that happen? Yeah, like sometimes, yeah, he does use Satan in the Bible. You see that? You know, like, mm -hmm. um, but, but the thing is, like, God is the actor there. God is the one directing this. And so that's why... That's why Job says, though he slay me, yet 
You know, he says something like, yet will I thank him, yet will I be, yet will I praise him. Like he'll make it up? Well, it's in this, it's in this sense, okay? Who in this, who in this life as human beings, flawed human beings, sinful human beings, okay. who deserves anything good at all? Well, in the sense that you just say, if you have faith, wouldn't that be a form of redemption? Okay, that's actually true. So, well, but here's the thing. I'm saying, okay, so so because of our sin, right, mm -hmm. no human being deserves anything good. We don't deserve a sunny day. We don't deserve a good education, friends, food, any of that. God in His kindness gives us those good things. Okay. And in and, and Romans it says that these good things, these kindnesses of God are, are meant to lead us to repentance. Right. In other words, to thank, to thank Him, to love Him, right? Not the good things. But it doesn't. For those who don't love God, it actually hardens them. They use it against God. Right. Right? But here's the thing. So even for Christians, you know, Christians, when somebody becomes a Christian, it doesn't mean that God's going to just bless you with all these good things in life. Mm -hmm. That's actually, it's usually the opposite that happens. Yeah. yeah, because like Christ himself, if you think about Christ and his followers, they were persecuted. They, they didn't have homes. You know, they lived in the fields, man. They were harried from town to town. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anything good going for them. Right. But they did have this. They had the only thing that mattered, and that was God for them. Mm -hmm. Because God's blessing doesn't show up always in material blessings. Right. In fact, it rarely does because these material blessings can become distractions for us. Okay. So actually the main blessing is sometimes when God removes these material things and we have nothing else but Him because that's our main satisfaction. Okay, but wouldn't He be sending up, I mean, wouldn't He be impacting our survival if He wants us to redeem he does. each other? No, 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 my man, He does impact us. In fact, right. we couldn't survive without God. Well, see, if you're talking about redemption, how, despite a human, wouldn't that be like going against your morals? To what a human? To like provoke a situation, like spite them even. Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, yeah. I, to because when it, you mean spite, when I you heard mean, about the Paul, the other guy, how he struck lightning, man blind, or something like that, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, Paul. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Why like that if you're asking for redemption? Okay, that's a great question. So that's actually God's judgment against that person. Really, but for any person yeah. beyond that. But see, the thing is, no human being deserves anything good. Yeah, right. Again, and when God that. does that. That's different. See, God is the one, he used Paul as an instrument, but God is the one who blinded that man. And so, and, and, but, but the thing is, like some of these things we can't really pry into and know why it is that some people are affected by this, some people are affected by that. I don't know. You know, God knows. And that's why, like with Job, Job says, though he slays me, yet will I thank praise him. him, yet will I thank him, right? So, so he's saying that because he's saying, you know, I don't know. This, I don't know why God deals certain blows. I don't know, but okay. I can trust God. So would you say if I forgive God for all the bad things, He can forgive me type thing? Well, you don't have, if you what? If I forgive God for all the bad things that happened in my life, that's a form of Him forgiving me. So do you feel like you're blaming God? No, no, I'm not blaming yeah, yeah. Him, but for all the things that has happened that I can't deny, and you say right. that God works in mysterious ways for every yeah, reason, right, right. for me to forgive Him and see better than that, is that a form of Him doing the same? Okay. Well, that's, so, so think about this though, my man. Okay, so when you forgive somebody, it's usually because that person has made a mistake against you. Right. But God has never made a mistake when dealing with us. I know, but like... So you don't have to forgive him for anything. Okay. But but because he's never done anything that he needs our forgiveness. And, so and you, you would say your own circumstances with your habits wasn't God working upon They you? are, but I would say this. Rather than use the word um, forgive God, I would use the word praise God. We should praise God for every circumstance, good or bad, that happens to us. Because we know that it comes from the hand. If you're a Christian... Mm -hmm. of a loving father okay. now if you're not a Christian I would say I would look at these circumstances and they are meant to drive you to repentance and to cry out to Christ to save you okay. because they're just a foreshadowing if you're talking about bad circumstances mm -hmm. they're a foreshadowing of what hell is actually like because okay. the bad circumstances in this life for those who are not Christian they're really just a small taste of what hell's actually going to be like. Would you say the same for like a murderer? Like there's no form of redemption for them? There is. For the murderers can be saved all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Murderers, rapists. I mean, um, yeah, there's guys that are saved all the time. Who? But the thing is, because you got to remember, man, like when you're talking about, Jesus says when it comes to murder that if we've had anger in our hearts towards somebody else, it's like murder. Right, right. So in a sense, right, right. we're all murderers. Like adultery? Was yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly, right? So it's like, rather than looking at somebody and saying, well, he's a lot worse than me, we should look at it and say, apart from God's grace restraining me right. to break out and to do what he's done, I would do even worse. 
It's God who keeps me restrained. It's God who puts me into circumstances that don't let me act that way. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we should praise God, not not for, uh, or, or put it this way, we shouldn't say, hey, God, at least I was better than this guy. We should say, God, you know, have mercy on me. I would be much worse than this guy if it wasn't for your grace. Is that before or after you take that action? What about if you did it already? Murder somebody? No. Well, let's say you got like stopped or something, uh, and yeah. you want to like shoot them just to go up. Oh, on I, see, it. I see. I see. I see. Can I have mercy like, beforehand or afterwards? Um, well, I, I, I mean, Jesus says turn the other cheek. You know, I'm not saying not to defend yourself. Right. But I'm saying like if, if I mean, if you're already shot and then you like chase the guy down to make sure you get your say in. Right. That's probably that's simple. Okay, but would it make a difference if someone sinned first on you? Probably it doesn't. No, no, no. It? Because remember, no. Christ says to love our enemies. Right. And so we should love our enemies even if they do shoot us. Even if they kill you? Still even, if they, even if they kill us. Remember what Jesus says? He was hanging on a cross that his own, I mean, the people who hung him there were, were beneath him while he's hanging on the cross. Right. And he says, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So forgive. Them. Forgive. Forgive. Stephen, Jesus' disciple, he was getting stoned. Right. They were killing him, and he looked up. Hey, how are you? Good, Good how to are see you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Good to see you again. Appreciate it, man. Yeah.